hello guys and welcome back to the channel for another weekly What I Watched. Before we talk about this week's What I Watched, my goodness, was any of you watching the Oscars last night or did you just wake up in the morning to the news about Will Smith and Chris Rock? I was watching live last night. Um, I was watching with the Cinema Squad who were doing a live stream while it was on. Um, my goodness, um, what a shock. I'm sure everyone knows by now that's in any way interested in movies. But Chris Rock called um, Will Smith's wife G.I. Jane in reference to her shaved head. And Will Smith's wife, I think it's Jada Pinkett Smith, has has had very public battles with alopecia. So um, it didn't go down very well. Um, what a lot of people are noticing is... Initially, when the joke was made, Will laughed along with everyone else. But when he looked at his wife and saw that she was not at all amused, um, he very quickly changed his tune. So everyone's posting, like, how they feel about it. Um, I'm kind of been back and forth. I've, I'm sort of thought about it and what I think. Um, I'm not a fan of Creole humour. I never have been. I don't like poking fun at anything a person can help or disabilities or any of those things. I do think Chris Rock just misstepped. What he said was insensitive. Um, but I do think Will Smith overreacted. Um, I do think he has every right to, to defend his wife and to say what he said with reference to keeping her name out of his mouth. Make it very clear you're not happy about what he said. But I don't think it was the right move to walk on stage and slap him. Um, my overriding what I came away with was what a shame it was for this special moment that he'd worked for his entire life to be outshone by his actions. Um, and it, it does take a stronger person to actually hold back that urge for physical aggression when you just want to flatten someone. Now, if this had been in the street or if this had been in a pub, um, my viewpoint would be slightly different. I'd say, yeah, if someone disrespects your partner to the point that they're upset, land them on their backside. People say a bounce is an answer. No, it's not an answer. But don't insult someone's wife about something that's a, a big issue and expect no repercussions. On the other side of that, I don't feel it was the right thing to do to walk up and stand and slap him because it it just overshadowed the night for everyone. Um, but yeah, that's my viewpoint. Put yours in the comments. What do you think? Um, I do think Chris... You see, I thought I didn't actually hear the joke when it was streaming because I was listening to the Cinema Squad and I was watching the performance at the same time. I've only sort of seen the joke in retrospect today when I've got up because I was watching till like half four in the morning. And um, I think he just said, looking forward to seeing your wife in G.I. GI Jane 2. Um, which when you look at it isn't massively offensive he's maybe he just didn't know about the alopecia I'm not sure I wasn't aware of it myself but it's one of those jokes that landed badly and we should be talking about the fact if we're talking about that situation at all that his joke was a bit misplaced um, but they handled it with grace rather than Will Smith went on stage and bitch slapped someone I think it's an odd relationship. I don't want to say too much, but it's very open about, um, literally, um, Will Smith and his wife's relationship is quite tumultuous. And I think my feeling was that he almost felt he had to defend her honour, especially since he giggled at the joke to start with. Um, when he looked at her and realised that it, it, would, it had not gone down well, at that stage he did what he did. When he was walking back to a seat, it was very clear he was looking to her for her approval. It didn't come across like he was hitting Chris Rock for his benefit. It came across like he was trying to placate his wife. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I just think it was the wrong move. But that's my viewpoints. How long did I waffle? About five minutes. I am sorry, guys. I'll try and fly through this week's um, what I watched. And um, Before I start, a massive get well to Joe from Geeky Hijinks, who has been hit with a Rona. Um, it's just been on a breakaway and he's come home and he's been hit by the Rona. I mean, oh, the luck. All of the bad luck. So get well soon, Joe. We all miss you. Um, we were mentioning you last night on the stream, hopefully. Um, you'll be back with us all soon. So let's get the old 
recorder going. Somebody did ask, I use a screen recorder on my iPhone called DU Recorder. So that's what it is. So, 21st Monday, I started the week with the ultimate playlist of Noise. Now this is one I've been meaning to watch. Should I move to the side of it? This is one I've been meaning to watch for quite some time. This is about a young man who is obsessed by music. Um, he is known for making playlists for every occasion that he gives to different people that have different musical tastes. Um, and he received some really bad news that he must have an operation and the upshot of that operation is that he is going to be deaf. So this boy, um, is a teenager, boy to me, um, is never going to hear any music ever again. And then he gets to thinking how he's never going to hear a sound ever again. So he sets out to make a playlist full of all the most satisfying sounds in the world or the sounds that he wants to celebrate before he loses his hearing. It is a, like a romantic drama. He does meet someone in this process. I'm not a big lover of romantic movies. I've made this clear. It's It always tends to be rom-com and that doesn't really connect with me. I really like this. I felt this was a really sweet, heartfelt movie and it did make me cry. Um, I was proper invested. I liked the characters. Um, I've said sweet movie with unexpected heart-wrenching moments. One of the better movies of this genre. So I did give that a three and a half, which is slightly above my average. If I enjoy something, but I'm not crazy about it, it's a three out of five. Three and a half is a little bit higher. Um, I did enjoy that one. I would recommend it. Did two people, a three and a four, we've got for other people that have watched it. So next one was X. Um, I won't talk about this for any length of time. I went to the cinema to see this. I did a video about it. There's the scores of everyone you know um, and you can see how popular the movie is and for good reason. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was fun. It was gory. It made me laugh out loud. I like the characters. I like the backstory. Um, I'm really looking forward to the potential prequel that we're going to get. Um, just I really liked it. I, you know, when I watch slashers, it wouldn't be, I love horror, but slashers is something I enjoy, but I never love. I did like this much more than your average slasher, so I gave that a four out of five. Um, same day I watched Dan in real life. Now, I had never seen this one. I'm a big Steve Carell fan. I really like him. Um, scrolling down, there's some scores from other people. Um, it looks like it's quite a popular one. I didn't like this as much as other people. So basically Dan, Steve Carell, um, his wife has died. He's bringing up his daughters by himself. He meets this beautiful woman in a bookstore and there's a connection there. And for the first time since his wife's death, he feels that he may have met someone special. He, he's gone to his family's big massive family for Thanksgiving. And when he goes in, he instantly says, I think I've met someone because he had coffee with her after the bookstore. Nothing happened, but there was that connection which they both acknowledged. It turns out this woman is his brother's girlfriend um, and he is forced to spend the entire Thanksgiving with her and her bro his brother, his other family members, his kids, all in this big house together. And obviously that is extremely awkward. Um, it is a romantic comedy. There are some heartfelt moments in there. Steve Carell, as I've said before, I really enjoy as an actor. I find him really endearing and really genuine. This movie I didn't feel was anything new. I really did not like, let me scroll, Juliette Binoche plays the character of Marie, who is the love interest that he's fixated by. Didn't like the character at all, couldn't understand what his fixation was. I found her irritating, I found her quite vapid. I thought how she treated him was terrible. Um, I couldn't get on board with his love and desire for her, given how she treated him after that initial special moment they had. So, um, yeah, I gave it, did I give it a two and a half? Yeah, I gave it a two and a half out of five. Okay, next up is Z, or Z, sorry. Um, British, Irish pronunciation, Z, American Z. Um, this young boy has a imaginary friend that he names Z that starts off perfectly harmless. And as the movie goes on, my foot's gone to sleep. This happened last week as well. As the movie goes on, um, Z begins to um, exhibit a lot more darker control over the young boy. Um, you can see the scores there. Most people weren't particularly impressed by it. The highest score there we have is a three out of five. Is that Monty? Yeah, so that's um, the horror Monty, the horror miser Monty G liked it enough. Um, who's that? Chiller Child um, two 
Emma from Spooky Astronauts. I gave it a two and a half. I thought it was very average, quite long-winded. I was looking at my watch. Is it nearly over yet? Which you don't want to be doing when you're watching a movie. Um, 24th, Corporate Animals. Okay, so this is a movie with, let me show you the cast there. Demi Moore, Ed Helms, um, Nassim Pedrad, um, Jessica Williams. Well, obviously the standout here is Demi Moore. Um, Ed Helms are probably the two most well-known. Um, this covers, there's the scores. So, Demi Moore is the egotistical CEO of an edible cutlery company. She texts her, her group of employees on like a team building exercise in the middle of nowhere. They're going caving. Is it called spelunking? But they're not like in really tight caves, so I'm not sure. But anyway, there's different tracks. And one of them is the less experienced one, which should be the one they're taking. But she insists she's like this real ball busting woman. She's a bitch, to be quite honest. I'm not saying women that are like driven and focused are bitches. I'm saying her character is a bitch in this. There's loads of swears for you in one sentence. Um, She insists that they do the difficult, like the advanced, which none of them are capable of. They go on this trek. They're in a cave and there's a cave-in and they're all trapped. The entire movie is set in this cave-in. Now that does not sound funny. This is a comedy. There are, I did snigger quite a few times. There's quite a bit of toilet humour in this, which generally I find quite funny. I'm quite juvenile like that. Um, the stupider it is, the funnier I think it is. Um, so there were moments in this that did make me laugh. Um, and I'm quite difficult to get my humour to make laugh. Um, people are going from a two to a three and a half in this one. Who's the three and a half? Midnight Spook. So, what did I give it? I probably gave it a three. Yeah, I gave it a three out of five. I did enjoy it. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't the funniest thing I've ever seen, but it was worth a watch. It was a fun movie. Um, on the 26th, I watched Boiling Point. Right, this was... There's some... Ooh, that's a popular one. I watched this... It wouldn't have been one I would have been initially attracted to, even though I love Stephen Graham as an actor. This is a British movie about a chef in his restaurant. Um, Jim Jam movies and TV, um, James Millership on one of the, the Facebook movie groups had recommended this. Now he works in this kind of environment, so obviously I can see why it would appeal to him to watch this. Um, but he said it was amazing, it was really good, and a couple of other people had agreed it was very good. So I thought, right, well, we'll check this out. I do love the actor. Um, this is a really, really well acted, really good movie. It won't be for everyone because it's a story of a normal night. Um, it's a story following this gentleman who has his own personal issues. He has recently separated. He has a problem with um, drugs and alcohol. Um, he's trying to juggle a busy kitchen. Um, it's overbooked. There's difficult customers. There's also a reviewer in that night, a food reviewer. There's a proposal going to take place. Um, everything's happening on this specific night and if it can go wrong it goes wrong and this covers the entire stress of that whole night this is one of these continuous shoot movies where it follows just in one continuous tick um, I was really impressed by it I thought it was really well done I thought it completely captured the mood and the feel Stephen Graham as always was flawless but there was no weak link here every performance was spot on I really did enjoy this um, what did I give it? I gave it a three and a half out of five so have we any more left? 26th. So finally, um, that was Saturday, I went to the cinema with my son to see The Bad Guys, which is obviously an animation. We don't have any scores for that as yet. So this was fun. It was really interesting animation, the way it was done. It was like a mix of 2D and 3D in places and there was like little anime sort of like ads to it as well. This follows um, a group of bad guys, so the stereotypical animals that people relate to being bad. So we have a snake, we have a wolf, we have a piranha, we have a tarantula. So anything you can think of being frightened of, we have as this group of bad guys who carry out heists and bank robberies, all this kind of thing. And this is about the biggest job they ever want to attempt. Um, and I'll not say any more than that. It's a fun movie. I enjoyed it. Um, it was a bit predictable. There are for kids, they're going to really enjoy this. They're not going to see the twists coming. As an adult, you will. But as a kid, kids will really dig this. They will really enjoy it. Um, I thought it was a really fun movie and I gave that one a 3 out of 5. Right, so there's the old screen recorder gone. So that's what I've watched this week, guys. I'm still playing, yes, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have um, played a little bit of Cyberpunk 20, 2077. 
Um, not loving it at the minute, but that's not unusual for me. It takes me a while to actually get into games. Um, I just, I always want to resort back to what I'm comfortable with in order to relax, which at the minute is Assassin's Creed. Um, it's a bit of a, I'll tell you what's an annoyance about cyberpunk is it's in first person and I can get a bit of motion sickness and you can't see yourself. So there's like this amazing facility to design completely what you look like at the beginning, male or female. I mean, right, this is unsuitable for children's ears. There is even the facility to pick your boobs and your nipples and your pubic hair, for God's sake, everything. If you're a male character, apparently you can choose the size of your different bits. Um, my son was playing this game. He's 11. Is he 11? Yes, he's just turned 11. He came downstairs. Mom! Mom! There's a bit in this where you pick the size of your bits. I was like, oh Christ. No, he probably shouldn't be playing it at 11, but he is. Um, so you get all this, like you can choose piercings, you can look really alternative, you can pick tattoos, and I'm loving all this. I'm like, yes! And my female looks incredible by the end of this. And then you can't see her because of your first person. There's a couple of little bits where you can look in the mirror um, and that's it, but it's unusual. And then you get to a stage of the game quite near the beginning where it asks you to disguise yourself. So you have to change your appearance again. And I'm like, I spent all that time picking what I wanted as the perfect female and now you're making me change it <sighs> and breathe. So yes, a um, bit of frustration with Cyberpunk. I will get back to it. Um, a couple of, I've mentioned the games I'm looking forward to, um, the new God of War game, the new Assassin's Creed game. Um, they're the two I'm most looking forward to. My dream game would be if they made Red Dead Redemption 3. I would be all over that, but no word of that at the minute. So that's what's, oh, I had a bit of paper upstairs with loads of stuff I'd been watching, um, which I've forgotten. Um, I've watched a documentary called 800 Meters, which is Spanish, and it's about a terrorist attack in 2017, where um, these young men inadvertently blew themselves up when they were packing explosives, which I find quite funny, to be honest with you. The only one that survived, survived because a wall fell on him and protected him from the blast. They had intended, obviously, to have massive amount of carnage. It didn't go right. Um, and one of the lads that didn't die uh, broke off from the others and drove a van to a particular town. This is really condensed of what happened. And proceeded to drive it down the busiest street in that particular city. And he killed 13 people. And he injured an awful lot of people. Um, full video footage in the documentary of that happening. Um, and then there are other members of the same terrorist cell that are actually apprehended when they take to a town with knives. Now, what I don't get is four of these guys went into a shop. They're all around the age, 19, early 20s. These four lads went in and bought massive knives and a hatchet and tape. That was it. And the person that sold it didn't find that at all, you know, like suspicious. If you're presenting me with four young lads that are buying big massive knives and hatchets, I'm going to contact the police and say I'm a bit concerned about this situation. They weren't buying anything else. Like, you couldn't say oh, they're having a barbecue because there were no other implements. It was just knives and massive big knives at that. So, uh, it's just, I don't know. So, I watched that. I have started watching Pieces of Her, which I'm enjoying at the moment. That's a show on Netflix with... Um, why do I want to say Tandy Newton and it's not Tandy Newton, it's her that was in Hereditary, whose name's completely escaping me at the minute, but you'll all know who I'm talking about. Um, she's in it, really enjoying it. I have been watching The Last Kingdom. I am Uhtred, son of Uhtred of Babenberg, which when I hear it, all I hear is Battenberg and I want cake. Um, so I'm on season four of that at the moment. There has been a fifth season released recently, so I need to finish that. Um, I've been watching loads of true crime stuff and like some sort of spooky stuff as well. If you see a dog's bum, Dobby's just jumped up there. I can't see on the camera if she's on or not. So I've watched quite a few true crime stuff and I have watched, um, I've started watching Ghost Adventures. I'm really into paranormal shows. Zach Baggins, Baggins, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I'm not that big a fan of. I find him too showboaty. But um, I watched an episode of the most recent season, season 20, I believe it is, and I scared the pants off myself. I was in bed at night and it was dark, and I really wished I hadn't watched it. But I enjoy stuff like that, so I watched that. It's just gone away again. So, yes, guys, that's what I've been watching. Sorry, it's rather long-winded. Um, plans for cinema trips. This weekend is eventually my son's birthday cinema trip. We are going to see Sonic 2. 
I have to say I'm not looking forward to it. I think it looks terrible. My son thinks it looks really good, so that's the main thing. Um, I really want to see the outfit. That's really on my to watch list. So hopefully I'll get a chance to get to the cinema at some stage and see that. But it's quite busy at the minute. I'm busy, busy, busy bee. So fingers crossed. What I'm considering making a feature on the channel. You can let me know if you think it's a good idea, or if you would watch it, if you'd be interested in watching it. Is to take movies that are based on true stories and to cover the true story <clears throat> of the individual. So I have done it a couple of times. I did it about 127 hours. Um, the movie which was about Aaron Ralston and I did it about The Exorcism of Emily Rose which was about Annalise and I've forgotten her surname um, but I covered those two so I'm thinking of sort of going down that route sort of talking about the real stories behind these movies so it sort of like ties together my love of true life stuff and movies so I thought it would work for me for my channel so let me know what you think guys. But with that said, thank you so much for watching as always guys and I look forward to catching up with you next week. Over and out from Lisa Loves.